Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Fraser. This video is part of a series on basic Java for programmers, so you already know some programming, just not Java yet. This video will cover some model view separation about how to split into different packages your parts of your application, plus looking at how we create a basic object manager to store, you know, in this case it's going to be a door manager. So I'm starting off with some code that I've done in the previous demos. Here it is, the um, uh, a door class, and we're going to be making some uh, product that actually sort of stores doors, into including is the door open or closed, and the weight of the door. So let's go back here and see where we're at. So the first thing I want to do is actually create the packages for the different parts, the model and the view. So I'm going to right click on my Java package, and I'm going to say I want a new, and in this case I'm going to create a new package, which should be on the list here, package. And I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call this one ca.demo, uh, let's call it ca.doordemo. And I'm going to call this one, this is going to be for my model, so model. Now a package is a group of um, classes. And so we're going to put some related classes all together inside that package. We're going to split up my classes because in a big project, you can have a lot of, pro of classes in one folder, it gets confusing, and it gets tricky to understand what is using which parts are using which other parts. So I'm going to drag and drop my door into here, and I'll say refactor, sure, and that'll make it all move, do refactor, and now we can see it's added this package at the top, package.doorDemo, and model. I'm going to create a new package here, new package. And this is going to be ca.doordemo. And let's call this one UI. And I'm going to move some things into here a little bit later when we actually kind of finish making our UI. But for the moment, let's start working on that manager. We need a manager to actually represent a collection of doors. So that's going to go inside my model class, or my model package. I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call this one door manager. And inside my door manager, it's quite simply going to just store a collection of doors. So that's going to be a private list of door objects. I'm going to call it doors equals new uh, array list of, well, we don't need to tell what it is because it's empty. OK, um, if you're looking for more information on array lists, see the previous video in this uh, series that will walk you through using array lists. Now, as it turns out, I don't want much here. I'm just going to have a method for a public method. Uh, let's make it public void add. And I'm going to pass in a door. Let's call it door. And when you pass me in a new door, public, uh, when you pass me a new door, I'm just going to add it to my doors. So doors.add door. Quite simple there. And there's one more thing that I want to be able to do, and maybe we'll come back and add that later on in a minute, is making some, let's do it now, iterable. We'll make it iterable. So what we want to be able to do is inside of my main, for example, I'm going to create a door manager. Manager, I'm going to call it manager equals new door manager. That's fine. I want to say, for example, manager.add a new door and false, and one, two, three, four, five, sounds good. So I'll add that in, and then I want to do the for each loop. So I want to say for each door, door, let's call it D, in doors, uh, pardon me, manager, I want to just print it out, S out, and door is uh, D. So that's what I want to be able to do. I want my manager class to support this for each loop. And at the moment it doesn't. And I say here, for each not applicable to type such and such. Well, let's make it applicable. All that we need to do is implement the iterable class. So implements, uh, pardon me, the iterable, uh, the iterable interface. Implements iterable. And it has to be a type. This is a generic interface. And so I've got to say, well, this is going to be, I'm able to iterate over the doors. So you can iterate over doors of this thing. And it's still not happy. Why? Well, if I mouse over it, it's going to tell me that you must either be declared abstract or implement the abstract methods. OK, so we're missing some methods. I'm going to hit Alt, Enter to do a quick fix. And I'm going to say implement methods. These are the methods that are found in the iterable interface. As it turns out, 
These latter two have default implementations, so I'm not going to worry about them for the moment. I'm just going to implement this iterable or iterator method. So this is all that's needed. I need to be able to return an iterator from the iterator method. An iterator is a way of accessing the elements in a, an, a collection. And it turns out I don't have to write my own iterator. ArrayList already has one. So I can say doors dot iterator and I'm done. I'm just going to return this list's iterator. So doors dot iterator, I get their iterator, and I hand it back. Now this isn't necessarily the safest way to do it, but it'll work. Let me go back to main, and as it turns out, that's all I needed here. I'm going to do shift F10 to run that. And we should now see my new door. Control shift F10 perhaps. There, control shift F10 is going to make it work. And here we see the door. Now you'll note that the name of the class is now the full, fully quantified name of the package as well. I could go back and edit my class if I wanted to change that. Okay, so now I've got my manager inside of my model. Let's go ahead and create the UI. Um, I've got all of this written already. I'll just sort of add it in in sections to save us time. So I'm going to create a new class. I right-clicked on the package I wanted to put it in, and I said new class. And then here I'm going to tell it the name. And let's call this one door text UI. It's going to be a text-based UI. And it's now inside of this package. So if I look at that, what I want to do is I'm going to have it reference, sort of store reference to the manager. So I'm going to say um, private, and this is going to be a door manager, manager. I don't want to instantiate one here. I'm going to let one be passed into me. This is called, uh, what's it called? That's called injection. I'm going to do dependency injection. So my constructor is going to take in a reference. So I did Alt Insert to get it to. Uh, let me do that again, just less, not as fast. I'm going to hit Alt Insert on the keyboard, and I'm going to tell it to create me a constructor, and it's going to pass in a manager. So this is dependency injection. I depend on the door manager, and so one is passed to me. I don't actually instantiate it myself. Now once I have the door manager, I want to create a new method here that's called public. I'm going to have it be a void and let's say show. This will show the menu. So I'm going to do some basic structure here. Boolean is done. False. Uh, while not is done. And here's my mess, my menu. Keep doing this. Now I'm going to bring in uh, some code here I've already got written, just block it in. Um, I need to ask the user for what their choice is. So I'm going to bring and put up a message, enter 1 to add an item, 2 to list the ones we've got, 3 to quit. I'm going to use a scanner, so I'm going to hit Alt, insert, Alt Enter pardon me, on this, and I'm going to import the class. I can pick which scanner I want. I want the standard Java Util one. So here we're going to have a scanner. I'm going to call it in off the system.in. And I'm going to read in a choice. Now once I've read in the choice, I want to do something about that. So I'm going to use a switch statement, switch on my choice, and allow me to pick a bunch of things, uh, any value. So I'm going to start off with, let's bring in some code for case one, which is the add. Here I'm just going to print out a prompt to the user, and then we're going to, um, let me get rid of this out of the bottom, We'll print out a prompt to the user and then read in a wait and build a new door that's open and add it to my manager. So this adds a new element to it. The next thing I want to do is I want to be able to list all of the doors. Well, this is going to use my for each loop that we just talked about. So in case two, I'm going to print out all the doors. So a message for doors. And then for each door in my manager, it is iterable, so we're good. And I'm just going to print it out. I'm using some spaces here just to kind of make things look a bit better on the screen. And of course, the final case is when you want to finish, case three is done. Now, any switch statement I write, I also add in a default, even when I don't want to use it. And I usually put in an assert false or something here. Uh, maybe which, rather than putting it printing, ah, yeah. We'll have it actually print out a message to the user saying, please enter uh, one or, oh, let's go one two, or three, because we've got three different options you can enter. So that'll be just my UI. I need to actually now kind of wire this UI in. I need to instantiate and call the constructor and pass in a door manager to do dependency injection, and then call show. 
So let's see what we're going to do with that. So in main, I'm going to get rid of this stuff I don't want to put in here. I want to create a door manager. That's my model. That's sort of the uh, the primary way of accessing all data in my model is through this manager. And then I'm going to create the UI. So this is going to be my door door text UI. I'm going to call this one UI is equal to new door text UI and it needs a manager passed in. And then I can call UI.show. That's fairly a standard way of creating and I'm going to get rid of this too, why not? I'll move that out of here. I'm going to move it into my door class. And I think I've got a bracket problem. Yes, I do. Copying, pasting code sometimes works, but sometimes not. OK. So now, if I go back into main, we're simply going to create the, create the model. So this is the I'll call it create model, create UI and then launch. And I have spe separated into these two packages, the model package with all my model related information and the UI with my door. Let's run that and prove it works. Now the big payoff for doing this is that we want to be able to reuse our model even if the UI changed. So at the moment I've got a text UI, which is OK here, but if I switch to a website or I switch to an Android application, I'd want to be able to take all of my model with me and I just replace the UI. So I take this entire model package and all of its in contained classes and I could copy that into another project. So let's just see here. If I list what I've got, there's nothing yet. I'm going to add in a new door. Let's give it a weight of 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to then list my doors. There's my one door. Add another one with 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. List the doors. And there are two doors involved. And I'm going to exit. So I've got a very simple text UI. I've got that all contained inside of one package. I want to make sure that my model, incidentally, is not accessing the screen. Because on an Android application, system.out doesn't mean anything. So make sure that your models are all just returning data, so my doors are returning information. It can return a string, so if there's a string to be processed, it hands back a string, and I can then use that string when I want to. All right, thank you very much for watching. That concludes this video. If you're interested in more, have a look at the rest of the series, uh, series rather, um, or go ahead and click subscribe down below.